Okay, record is on. This meeting is being recorded. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to a new series of the Center of Research, Innovation, and Design Decree. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar titled A Developer's Perspective, the 10 Misconceptions I Had When I Was an Architecture Student. Please join me in welcoming our special guest speaker, Sara Bastaki. Sara have, have graduated from AD in 2014 with a bachelor degree in architecture, started her career as an innovation engineer at the Dubai municipality, then moved into development and real estate at Wesley Properties. After three years, Sara moved to RMR Development, where she worked on different residential, hospitality, and master planning projects. In 2019, Sara completed her master's degree at Cambridge University, and her thesis topic focused on Dubai urban escape. And currently, Sara is working at Majid Al Futaim as a development manager working on Tilal Al Jaff project. Before giving the floor to Sara, I would like to invite all the attendees to type their questions in the Q&A section or send it privately to me. Thank you, Sara. Welcome, and the floor is all yours. Thank you very much, Hadi, for the introduction. And good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope you guys are settled in with your courses and classes. First, I would like to thank Professor George for inviting me to this webinar. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here and to share some of my professional insights. Let me just share my screen. Okay, I think you guys are all able to see it. Um, so you sure know that student life is different than professional life, and but not until you actually go out there yourself and try it that you would truly understand. When you're a student, you are at the university shell and your focus is on your project, but uh, and you rarely deal with people, but out there is different. The professional learning curve can be steep and can be a bit overwhelming, however, when you set your mind to the right path and acquire the right skill, you can surely survive. So in this presentation, I will discuss the 10 misconceptions I had when I was an architecture student. Moreover, I will talk about the expectation and how to be better prepared uh, for this next stage. So here we go. So back when I was a student, I always thought that the sky is the limit. And as an architect, be as creative as you can. While this is true, but, but it's definitely misleading. One of the things I learned in my professional life that you do not do much of designing. And even if you do, there is multiple limitation, such as budget, cost, and infra limitation. Let me give you an example. Uh, you rendered uh, this pretty picture of lush neighborhood. However, the infrastructure is limiting your design intent because you don't have enough irrigation to create this landscape. Now, at the end of the day, you need to limit your dreams, but to provide a design that's efficient to bring your project uh, to life. Freedom of design does not simply exist. Basically, the client demands and the architect's design. In a typical scenario, the developer who we call a client hires an architect or a consultant to do a certain design job. Usually, as a developer, we have a specific scope of work and a brief that we clarify before even the project kicks off. And in terms of, uh, it's, it's very specific in terms of general concept and in terms of budget. And throughout the design development uh, phases, the cost is monitored. And if the cost went above the allocated budget, which to be honest, most of the time happens, then the architect will have to tweak the design uh, to, follow the, to follow the budget. Now in project management, as some of you might be aware of, there are three main elements that we need to cater for, budget, or money, time, and quality. And I have put money first because from my experience, it always wins. We have what we call the Excel sheet design, where we do a feasibility study. This feasibility study include different numerical factors, uh, such as construction cost per area, sellable cost per, uh, cost per area, and other soft costs. The result of the feasibility, uh, we get what we call the IRR, which is the internal rate of return. This IRR basically uh, tells us and analyzes the growth and the profitability of the project. 
Now, each company has their own targets. And if the feasibility satisfies that target, then the project moves on and vice versa. Uh, we do the feasibility study multiple times throughout the project lifetime. But the most important one, I would say the initial one, because uh, it tells you if their project is actually worth developing or not. Now, is, is, does stress level goes down? Definitely not. Uh, if to compare between university stress and work life st stress, I would say maybe university is 25 to 30 percent uh, in comparison to 100 percent, which is work. <laughs> in real life, there are so many last minute urgent tasks that you need to do or or certain projects that you need that you need your that they need their pr your prompt response on or a sudden uh, presentation to management that you need to prepare for. You need to be uh, being resilient and being flexible is part of the job description. However, the most st stressful period, uh, I would say for both architect and developer will be launch time. That's because there are uh, so many different elements that we need to be, that needs to be approved and ticked on before the project is seen by the public. The design needs to be finalized and approved by our internal management and then approved by our external authorities. At the same time, we need to be preparing for the launch uh, technicalities such as providing the renders, providing the animation, the physical models, material boards. Uh, we also then need to set up the pricing. We need to set up the IT system. We need to talk to our sales, to our brokers. Then after all of this is done, uh, we can peacefully launch the project. So stress level is, is not reducing. Some projects just suck and that's Unfortunately, the ugly truth. When you start your career, do not expect to be given a big design assignment. When I started my profession, I actually had my share of some low cost, low value projects such as staff accommodation. The scope of these projects, you really build it as cheap and as simple as you can. With that said, as mundane as the project could be, you need to take it as an opportunity to learn project management skills, such as going through the decision making process you can also try to apply the design thinking skills that you have developed as an architecture student. Moreover, this project will give you the chance to be part of a project lifetime and to understand how the process goes from design to actually construction, constructing it. There is no better way to learn than doing. And as a fresh graduate, you are likely to, to learn every day. Communication skill is a key. It is one of the things that you probably don't focus on in university. We always have this idea that an architect works alone, but in reality, you don't. Communication becomes a big part of your job. You're expected to facilitate and orchestrate communication between all people involved. The quality of the communication can highly affect the project, uh, how the project runs. As a developer, we are the owner of the project meaning we are responsible to navigate between the different stakeholders involved to achieve the vision and build the project. The job asks for inter interdisciplinary skills. The stakeholders communication include external and internal. Example of external stakeholders include DDA, DM, and DLD. That's, uh, these are shortcuts for uh, Dubai Development Authorities, Dubai Municipality, and Dubai Land Department. Internal stakeholders include our own design team, you know, which include uh, our interior designers, structure designers, uh, mechanical, electrical. It also includes our marketing team who usually request from us uh, to do certain uh, rendering, certain animation to show the lifestyle, you know, happy people. Uh, we also have the sales team who usually consult uh, before the start of the project to see what is currently in demand in the market. Does the people do the people want more apartment, townhouses, or standalone villas? A big part of our job is to deal with finance to ensure that the feasibility is working throughout the project lifetime. Uh, there is also uh, the presentation that we do to our upper management, uh, such as you know the CEO, to present uh, you know to them the project. So in general, as a developer, you are the maestro that runs the orchestra of the project. Now, as sad as it is, income is not great. And you will be working uh, long working hours uh, with last minute demands, last minute submission, and last minute management presentation that you need to be aware of. You will sometimes, unfortunately, sacrifice your weekend for this. <laughs> There's no, nothing much to say about this. Um, 
So in university, we learn about FAR and GFA, uh, floor area ratio and gross floor area. But in reality, when you deal with different entities and different targets, there are different area scales to consider, such as BUA, built up area, and GSA, gross sellable area. As I mentioned previously, before the inception of the project, we conduct a feasibility study where, where every area counts and any mistake can cause time and money. It literally makes or breaks the project. If we take an, if we take an apartment building, for example, efficiency of the buildings matter. We calculate efficiency by taking the ratio of the sellable area, what we sell to the uh, client, which is the apartment, and the gross floor area, which is the total area of the uh, building. The ideal efficiency is 80%. If this was lower, then the feasibility of the project is highly affected, which in return affects the net profit we gain out of this project. And as a result, our decision uh, to build this uh, apartment building if gets affected, if we need to build it or not. Know your business language. So we always say we can explain things through drawings, but in reality, we need to understand business terminologies to be able to communicate with different stakeholders. For example, before you send a contract to a contractor or, or a consultant, we send what is called an EOI, which is expression of interest. And if they're interested, we would then send them our contract, which is called RFP, request for proposal. We would then go back and forth to discuss their cost. And then we will ask them for their, for their uh, BAFO, which is the best and final offer. There is also different acronyms that comes across during the design stages. For example, you have VE, value engineering, you have MEP, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, etc. When you start work, you will need to establish your communication skills to be able to understand how things go. And one piece of advice, don't be ashamed to, be, uh, to ask questions. This does not show your lack of knowledge. Instead, it shows your eagerness to learn. And your hiring employer will expect you to, to ask questions, especially if you are a fresh graduate. The nature of studying architecture allows you to be exposed to different disciplines, and it opens the door for different career choices. As a professional path, you can choose anything you want. You can, you can be purely an, a consultant or an architect. You can go into development. You can go into market research. You can be a broker, a salesperson, which is, by the way, not a bad idea. Their income is greater. You can also focus on being an animator for architecture or non-architecture projects. And you know, with, with the trends of AI, you can also be an AI architect. However, if you're feeling that architecture is not your path, you can always switch to something else. Architecture education is so rich and it offers, it is, architecture education provides you with a rich knowledge base and offers a creative way of thinking and problem solving that you can use it anywhere else you choose. I mean, I have friends who went into di diplomacy and they succeeded at it. So in conclusion, with that said, I honestly never regretted studying architecture. The process of creating a project is usually fun. From the start, which is research, setting the scope, hiring the consultant, to actually taking the design uh, uh, development of it. The work is never monotonous. Uh, furthermore, you don't work on the exact same project twice. And even if you do, the process and the challenges are different. In addition, feeling the, feel, uh, the feeling of accomplishment you get after seeing your project built and constructed is indescribable especially when you start seeing people occupying your, the space that was once upon a time on paper. It gives you this feeling of pride. To conclude, and as, as an advice, remember that your first job does not have to be your dream job. I know mine was not, and there is no pressure. And as a fresh graduate, any start can be useful and a valuable learning opportunity. Uh, try to attend meetings as much as you can, even if you feel underqualified you will always pick up something useful on the way. Be patient, be engaged, be resilient, and don't give up. And as a final note, always have something on the side that would lift you up Things when things get hard at work, when things get too boring, too annoying, too uninspiring, and try to enjoy it. And thank you very much.
Thank you so much, Sara, for this amazing presentation. Thank you for your time, effort, and I'm sure this was an eye-opening to many here. So now uh, we can move to the questions. We have some questions over here. So the first question is, how being an architect helped you in working in a developer's world? I think being an architect is one of the uh, best thing that you would do if you want to go into development because the way that we studied architecture we understand the drawings we understand uh, the technicality of things we understand the uh, process uh, of, of the design development and in and in, in, in being in uh, development and real estate I think this is what you need you need people who understand the quality of design to be actually going out there and building it and constructing it so it's definitely I would say maybe prerequisite to go into real estate. Okay, um, moving to the next question. Um, tell us one of the most challenging experiences you had to pass through and how you resolve it. Yeah. Um, I'm not a quick thinker when it comes to thinking about personal experiences, but maybe at the beginning, I would say uh, maybe, maybe my second being in when I started my career in real estate I would say so my manager probably gave me a piece of RFI and he's like read it and uh, what do you think of it so you know reading a contract document is something very foreign for for an architecture student um, so I had to do a lot of research um, you know just just simply to understand a simple document that everyone there in the company knew it you know by heart so it just takes a lot of um, you know, it takes a lot of time to build your career confidence. And it's, and I think uh, being surrounded by people who helps you um, uh, will, will lift you up and will, uh, will help you develop your career uh, uh, confidence. <laughs> yeah. And uh, like, what's your advice regarding like this situation, how we can help, uh, you know, the students right now to be more familiar with the field, with the industry? Mm. Uh, one, of, one of the advice I would give is uh, go to internships a lot, go to work placements a lot. That helps a lot. Um, you know, I, I would say internet is a good is a good place to start and to read. There's a lot of good advices out there. And if you have someone who's in the field, uh, ask questions. And, uh, you know, these webinars are very helpful. I mean, thank you, Professor George, for creating such a platform for uh, for people to learn and attend. So. It's, it's more of a self-research, I would say, and self-knowledge to gain. Yeah. Yes. And we have another question. Um, so you mentioned university life pressure is 25% compared to professional life. What's your yeah. advice to the students on this in order to prepare better for the market? The thing is, when it comes to professional life, like sometimes you are very extremely busy. Sometimes things go a bit, um, I wouldn't say quiet, a bit, um, yeah, less, less busy. But how to be prepared for it? You just need to have this mindset that things, that you need to be resilient and that Yes, you're pressured now, but you might have a bit of gap later on. And it's it's when 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 the pressure comes, you need to find a place to release that pressure. You know, you choose you choose your uh, your uh, your place. You know, some people like to go, for example, I don't know, playing football or something. So you need to find. I think it's the trick is you need to find the balance. And there is no specific advice that I can give as much as. When you're there, just have an open mind, be resilient, and be up to up to work. And if you have any certain any certain challenges and any certain um, um, struggle, let the people around you be aware of it. Don't take it in, especially when you're new and you're fresh. It's only expected that this is that that you're going into a foreign uh, place. Uh, okay, we have uh, another question asking about your opinion about the new project in Abu Dhabi. Is it a dream or a realistic project? Uh, I'm not sure which project uh, are, are they referring to. I um, think it's the museum. The Louvre. The Louvre. The Louvre in the Abu Louvre? Dhabi. The Louvre. 
Yeah, um, I mean, it's built. Uh, the, the, okay. Yes, the, the Jean Nouvel project. So they've yeah, been yeah. asking if you think that it is realistic or right. So yeah, it's, or the question is, do you think this is more of a dream project or a realistic project? Hmm. <laughs> It's, Maybe it's, you give your developers perspective. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would say its design went efficient. <laughs> Maybe mm. it's uh, it's bringing dream into reality. Maybe that's that's the answer because it's it's an amazing project. It's an amazing. Um, um, like it, it pointed out the UAE uh, in comparison to the world. So its its dream came into reality with efficiency. <laughs> okay, so it's combining both. I think so because it's one of uh, it's it's one it's one project that you wouldn't probably see a replica of it anywhere else, and uh, it gives you an interesting experience uh, per, as a visitor. Uh, so it's one of my favorite buildings, so probably in the UAE. So yeah. <laughs> so it's good. It's good for architects to keep dreaming and trying to make it real, even if sometimes you know it, it might be beyond real. beyond expected budget and all of that. Because I'm sure that was beyond <laughs> when it comes to you know. The yeah. budgeting of it, yes, yes, yes. Probably uh, at the end of the day, there's a choice, right? <laughs> yeah. And Sarah, you mentioned that. something. I have one question, if you don't mind. You, you, you mentioned something about you know not being afraid to ask and talk and and the things that you probably don't know. So, do you think that the environment, because you you've been through different culture, corporate cultures. So do you think the environment of the firm or of the corporation or of the company that you are at really makes a big difference in providing the opportunity for people to ask questions? So do you think that some environment, or at least from your experience, did you feel some environment are more open to actually you being able to ask or they were all equally like that? Like talking about you sometimes have an environment that is more open for questions yeah. and an environment that is... No, more open for blaming. <laughs> that's true. That's true. This exists. But I also think when when you are a fresh uh, graduate coming to a, to a company, from my personal experience, my questions were always welcome, to be honest, uh, okay. because they see you as a person that we want to invest on, invest in. Again, this okay. is from personal experience. If you ever been to a place that you feel that you're being uh targeted or uh not your questions are not welcome then probably this is i would say not not a healthy work environment but from where i was no i think i've thank god i got that uh luxury of having the people around me help me um uh, teach me uh, guide me so that was a good um learning experience for me throughout the different uh places i've been okay perfect that's from yes. my end yeah, so we are done with the, with the questions. And I would like to thank you, Sarah, for being here with us today. And to thank you for everyone who attended our webinar today. And yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Same here. Bye.